right, so it's the end of the day here almost, and uh, I wanted to do a quick Q&A here on a question that had come up a few times in previous comments, uh, and actually twice at least, but actually Martin Zanek here, that I'm now finally going to answer your question here uh, about the use and synergy between EndoSync Plus or EndoSync with the EndoSync AI, which is the Apex Locator connection with the handpiece. This is something that is very important and it certainly helps expedite the process of instrumentation for you guys. So hopefully this would be something that would be helpful to you the way I answer it. Uh, and I think for that, I'm going to have to use uh, the help of my friend Ralph to, to, to demonstrate this thing for you. So let's go down to my studio where I can show you the combination use of EndoSync and EndoSync AI in clinical situations. Alrighty, folks, I'm down here in my studio with the assistance of my friend and colleague, Ralph, who's going, who's going to help us uh, demonstrate this concept of the use of the EndoSync and EndoSync AI. Now, <laughs> Ralph volunteered for this function. I'm just going to show the lip clip portion. The rest of it I'm going to do on a block because it is going to make a little bit more sense. All right, let's take a look over here. What I have here now is uh, we've got Ralph and we've got your EndoSync Plus and the EndoSync AI, which is the Apex Locator. Let me put on my gloves here just for Ralph's own protection. And um, obviously the combination of EndoSync and EndoSync Plus is how you're going to be able to do your instrumentation while keeping track of the length. And I'm going to show you today how I use it myself clinically and how I troubleshoot some of the uh, issues that may come up. Now, first and foremost, your patient's going to, um, as the apex locator is going to require a lip clip, so you're going to have your lip clip that you're going to put on your patient's lip. In this case, it's going to go on Ralph's teeth here, but it's obviously going to be on the lip. Now, with the EndoSync AI, you have the option of just using your regular hand files that comes in and it gets connected to, you know, to your little lip clip, and you're going to use it this way and. Uh, just basically do your working length measurement. But what you can also do is instead of using it this way, you can connect your Epix locator to your EndoSync AI to your EndoSync Plus or EndoSync handpiece. Nowadays, I only recommend the EndoSync Plus. I think the EndoSync, uh, regular EndoSync is just um, outdated, if you will. It, this EndoSync Plus has a lot more functionality and what it does is you're able to program it for cutting with a uh, you know, forward OTR, reverse OTR. So essentially you can use all of the files that are on the market that are rotary files as well as reciprocating files. And it's also, you can change the angles of reciprocation. So it's fully customizable and it's future-proof in that sense for any future files that are gonna come out. But what happens with the combination of EndoSync and EndoSync AI, you're gonna need this additional type of cord that connects the two. And this is the cord here that connects the EndoSync to EndoSync uh, AI and it just gets connected uh, from the back here like that and now you have your Apex locator connected to uh, your um, handpiece and as you will see there are several memory settings uh, on this I have programmed these memory settings to reflect different instruments that are used with the endo sequence line um, I'm going to demonstrate now the uh, the use of the ESR scout file that has now recently been kind of uh, updated. So you have this 1503 file in two different flavors. You have an austenetic and a martensthetic version. So originally came with a martensthetic version, but it was way too flexible. I personally prefer to have a little bit of an austenetic uh, flavor to a file that is measuring the working length. So it has a little bit of strength and can, can actually not only just navigate the, the, the curvatures, but also be able to kind of just dig its way through. And there's also one additional file that has been added now. It's the 2004 finishing file. So you have an extra small on the ESRCM file. But anyway, let's not get distracted here. Let's focus on the working length measurement. So uh, at the time when I'm trying to measure the working length on a patient, what I would do is I would uh, do my irrigation and then I would stop and dry the chamber completely. I would actually dry a little bit into the um, top portion of the root canal as well, because don't forget, as you drop the file into that canal, the fluid level is gonna come up. And the key here is in order to get a very accurate reading, you want your chamber to be completely desiccated. Uh, that's not just true in the case of the endosync and endosync AI, it's just the case with any time you're doing epic location, the most accurate readings come when you don't have any fluid at all in the chamber. You only wanna have fluid in the root canal. And at that point, I'd rather actually have fluid in the apical half of the uh, root canal because my, when, when I add the file, that fluid level is gonna rise. All right, 
So we're going to thank uh, uh, Ralph for his uh, uh, modest contribution here. We're going to put him away so that now I can show you with this little uh, dummy block how this whole situation works. So we have a uh, block here that reflects a root canal and then the lip clip that's going to go on the patient's lip is going to be right here so we can see what happens when we uh, we, we introduce the file into the canal and how it moves forward. Now, there are several settings here. You can have this setting on this activated where the um, automatic start and stop is activated so that as soon as you put the file in the canal, the, the, it starts to rotate and as soon as you remove it, it stops rotating. That's up to you with the Martin Aesthetic files. I prefer to have the file um, to, to just activate it by hand instead of having it uh, activate it automatically because the file would be a little bit curved then it's going to be difficult to put it into the hole. But what ends up happening is that as you will see here as we move down the canal the instrument starts to the apex locator starts to show the movement and we get closer and then all of a sudden it comes to the point that you have previously programmed into the um, uh, apex locator as to the point in which you want your file your kind of apex to be determined. You can decide that space to be at the zero zero line, which I don't recommend. You could stop, have it as 0.5, which is what I would recommend. Or you could have it at the one um, millimeter mark. Now, these are not actual millimeter markings at that last segment. They're just kind of relative spaces. But I think just keeping it at the stock value that it comes at with the apex locator, which is at the half a millimeter, is adequate. So what happens when you reach the apex um, and the file comes to a stop at this point sometimes if the if the file is loose you can just pull it back and then it starts to get activated but if you have a very tight canal by the time you reach the apex you may not be able to pull back on the file and then there are a couple of workarounds with this problem that occurs from time to time there's three different ways you can address this issue one would be for the assistant to I'm just gonna to kind of try to to pull the this thing off and now once the lip clip is off the file is activated again so that's one option the other option would be for you to pull off this um, cord here and you can see then it gets activated again and then lastly which is what I do clinically is I have the apex locator next to my assistant so all the assistant does is turns off the apex locator like that and then it starts to cut again and then they count to five and then put it back on. And this gives me enough time to pull the file back. All right. So that's the real workaround here for this issue of the file. Sometimes if it reaches the apex, it may, if it's a very tight canal, you may not be able to pull the file back. But the workaround that I use is I have my assistant going to have the apex locator near them. And then they turn the apex locator off. That allows me to reactivate the file and bring it back out and then they turn it back on. So they, they usually turn off, they count to either three or five and then put it back on again so they can remeasure. Um, you can also change the setting in the programs here on the apical action. You can turn the apical action to off. And in that case, then the, you will see the reading. So actually this is what happens. Let me turn. I'm going to do is I'm going to go here on the menu, just press the S and hold it. And then you press it again. It goes to the clockwise, counterclockwise, the speed, the torque value, and then the cutting angle, the non-cutting angle. And then you have here, you have sync on and then apical uh, action is stop. And all I want to do here is you can change it here to um, apical reverse if you want, where the file begins to reverse. Uh, or what you could do is you can just have, and this is by the way, the auto start and stop um, to toggle here that you can change. Um, but what I'd like to do instead is let's go back here to apical action and it says sync on. And all I'll do is you can turn the sync off and now it no longer is exerting that auto stop and start uh, function, but it will give you the reading. So what ends up happening is that you put the file in the canal, you begin activating, and then as it reaches the apex, you reach the end and it continues to go. So you can actually go past the apex like that. So you have to be careful 
uh, in this particular situation if you're going to turn it off so that you are paying attention to the readings on the apex locator. I like to, I kind of listen to the apex locator. What I do clinically is I do my instrument, I have my working length kind of measurement from the x-ray ahead of time. I do my coronal shaping, then I connect the handpiece to um, my apex locator at the time when I'm trying to measure the actual working length. I measure the working length, then I capture the analog reading here on my endo ring, for example, then I know what the actual length is, and then I disconnect and I use my apex locator at that point as a method of just, uh, so just kind of efficient way of measuring the working length. And the, the rest of the time, I would be using my files with my ruler here to uh, set the length and move on. At the very end, what you can do is you could use one of your larger files, like a size 25 or a 20, to confirm your working length before obturation, as well as you will have a pretty accurate reading even at the end of the procedure that way. Anyway, so this is what I do clinically in order to get my working length measurement using the EndoSync and EndoSync AI and the workarounds for some of the troubleshooting that comes uh, that occurs, such as the file getting stuck when you're using it in a very tight canal and you have your apical sync uh, on. So all you have to do in those cases, if you don't want to have the file come to a stop, the way it's pre-programmed in the um, in the root menu of the handpiece when it comes with, you have to go into the menu by pressing the S and holding it and then changing that setting from sync on or apical sync on to apical sync off. And at that point, when the file reaches the apex, it's not going to stop. I am in the process also working with the manufacturer to come up with a more elegant solution to this workaround instead of turning the apex locator on and off. There are ways and I am working with the uh, the manufacturer on the software side of this as to how we can have a shortcut uh, to be able to disengage the apical sync on and off uh, with a button as opposed to have to uh, go through the menu to do that. And that would help address this issue. All right, so I hope this finally answers the question of how this is done. And I'm just gonna also show you clinically what do I do in this little video that's coming up after this. And with that, thanks so much. Watch that little video. And if any other questions, don't forget to write them down below. I look forward to our next video. All right, after some coronal shaping using some files of larger taper and smaller tips in hybridization taper protocols that I've described in previous videos, I dry the chamber completely, leaving just a little bit of fluid inside the root canals for better conductivity and measurement. And I switch to EndoSync Plus, connect it to my EndoSync AI, and I use my Scout 1704 taper for working length measurement. And as you can see that as, as achieved length, the file comes to a stop because the apical stop action is on. The assistant could adjust the stopper to the reference point, And then I remove the file and measure and capture that actual working length using my endo ring. And then I proceed to disconnect the apex locator and use that working length to do my instrumentation.